Hello everybody, the following is a reposting of a video I did a couple weeks ago. It was a response to certain hate speech that was posted onto Facebook that I felt that I had a moral obligation to expose uh, here on YouTube and in a public setting. Unfortunately, the person that posted the particular discriminatory statement uh, felt that I did not have the right to expose this information to the general public. The only change that I made to the content of this video is that I removed the identifying information about this individual. Uh, this person knows who she is, most of her friends knows who she is, but still the rest of the content of the video is going to remain the same. I'm also going to add certain content that is based upon the comments that were made to the original video. I thought added to the conversation. Good evening everybody on YouTube and happy holidays. Uh, this is a response video, really a bonus video of a Facebook post. Uh, I've tried to do one of these before. Uh, this Facebook post came a few weeks ago. Unfortunately I didn't have time to really do a good bonus video of it. Been busy with uh, Considerably more important things such as uh, uh, research projects, term papers, studying for my final exams, and uh, other really, really important things such as leveling up my World of Warcraft characters, which I always say doesn't really happen by itself. The last one was misinformed, uh, bigoted, discriminatory religious comments, blatantly plagiarized from other internet sources posted on your YouTube page. And that's exactly what we're finding with this one as well. It says, what a crock. We can't say Merry Christmas now. We have to say Happy Holidays. We can't call it a Christmas tree. It's now called a holiday tree because it might offend somebody. If you don't like our customs and it offends you so much, then leave. I will help you pack. They're called customs and we have our traditions if you agree with this please post this as your status i don't care who the fans merry christmas do you have what it takes to repost this um well no i'm not gonna repost it because it's direct plagiarism from other people but i can comment on this of course Let's clear up a few things before I go very much further. You have a fundamental right in this country, as protected by the First Amendment, to believe anything that you want to believe and express those religious beliefs in public. Even us uh, atheists tend to go by the Thomas Jefferson ideal, as he wrote in the Virginia State Bill for Religious Tolerance in the late uh, uh, 1700s, that. All people have the freedom to believe and by argument to maintain their opinions in matters of religion. I think it's fairly ironic as us atheists that are more inclined to respect and value religious beliefs of other people when we don't even get that same respect back. I also think it's a bit ironic that us atheists tend to know the Bible better than you Christians. So people even said that the best surefire way to create more atheists is to have more Christians read the Bible. So let's go through this comment. We can't say Merry Christmas now, we have to say Happy Holidays. That is because Happy Holidays is a more inclusive term. Uh, more respectful and values the beliefs and world views and opinions of other people around us. I'm having a difficult time trying to figure out what Christmas has to do with Christianity. Now hear me out when I say that. I stopped celebrating Christmas even back when I was a Christian once I realized that it was impossible, biblically speaking, for Jesus to have been born on December 25th. Now. I've figured that out, of course, is by the one verse that is repeated about a million times over by people who know these things, that there were shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. 
This only happened during the summertime when it was too hot to bring the flats out during the daytime, so they waited until the nighttime and let them graze when it was cool enough. Now, this was supposed to the uh, winter time when it was too cold at night, it would freeze over at night, but it was warm enough during the daytime to allow their uh, flocks to graze. So it was the concept then of shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night, that establishes the birthday of Jesus, allegedly, during the summertime, not the wintertime. Now, where does December 25th come from? December 25th was established in pagan traditions centuries prior to the introduction of Christianity. It is the winter solstice, okay? There are four major holiday periods in any pagan religion. It's the, the winter and summer solstices and the spring and fall equinoxes. The winter solstice is the longest night of the year, the shortest day of the year. The old day celebration welcoming the point in time when the god of the light or the god of the daytime began to assert his power over the nighttime. So nighttime began to get shorter and shorter, daytime began to get longer and longer. And uh, that is the point behind December 25th, the winter solstice. Now this is basic information. If you want more information about this uh, uh, particular type of celebration, I would highly suggest that you visit the YouTube channel of Cathonius. His link will be in the description box below. He is the resident ex-pagan among the uh, YouTube atheist community. So anything about paganist traditions, you can ask him just as uh, you want more information about Christianity. You can talk to me, you can talk to Prophet MTH and several of us who used to be very devout Christians. Now, Cathonius responded to the original video. He stated that among the the four pagan festivals that I mentioned, the two solstices and the two equinoxes. There were also four other festivals that sort of fell between the four that I mentioned, roughly corresponding to the changing of the four seasons. I thank him, of course, for that added information. And it uh, still confirms the fact that the December 25th came from the winter solstice, and that was added to Christianity at a later basis. It wasn't until the 4th century CE when, when uh, Emperor Constantine established Christianity as the official religion of the Roman Empire that, that Christian, now having a, a political basis behind their actions, began to uh, persecute other religious beliefs, including the pagans. In order to force conversion of more people to Christianity, uh, they began to steal blatantly steal the religious traditions of these pre-existing pagan traditions and redefine them as uh, Christian holidays. Christmas, Easter, Halloween, and so on uh, are actually things that pre-existed Christianity, but Christianity took over and they now became Christian holidays. Now, I, once I realized this, I stopped celebrating Christmas as the birthday of Jesus and and so re realized that, that it had this uh, uh, pagan tradition in origins and celebrated like that. You don't have to believe that Christmas time is the birthday of Jesus in order to realize that it is a time of gift giving and merriment and time spent with your family. And this is something that we find that both religious people and atheists uh, regardless of the beliefs can come together and agree that Yes, this is a time, yes it is a biblical statement, peace on earth, goodwill to men, but that is something that we can all agree to, no matter what our religious beliefs happen to be. So, we can't say Merry Christmas now. Well, yes you can. I <laughs> bought Christmas presents the other day. I bought Christmas presents. I'm an atheist. I bought Christmas presents. Yes. And what did the lady say behind the counter? I said Merry Christmas. Well, I said to you too, I, I won't say Merry Christmas, but you can. We can say Merry Christmas all that you want to. We have to say Happy Holidays. In certain business establishments, they have switched to Happy Holidays. As I said, a more inclusive and respectful term. 
that that recognizes that not everybody shares the same beliefs. Not everybody believes in Christmas. Even some Christians don't believe in Christmas, so you don't say Merry Christmas, say Happy Holidays. We don't call it a Christmas tree, it's now called a holiday tree. Well, yeah, it, it started as a pre-Christian -Christ tradition. I challenge anybody who is a Christian and celebrates Christmas to tell me what in the rut gutted bloody heck a Christmas tree has to do with Christianity. Open up your Bibles, point to the scriptures that tell me what a Christmas tree has to do with Christianity. It is a pagan tradition to decorate trees in celebration of the winter solstice. Stolen by Christians. That's why you're not going to find it in the Bibles. Of course, you won't know that because you don't actually read your Bibles. It's now called a holiday tree. I don't know of anybody who calls it a holiday tree. Everybody calls it a Christmas tree even though it has nothing to do with Christianity. So what? Even churches still uh, decorate Christmas trees, but in, right in their churches, even though it has nothing to do with Christianity. So what? Now, as some people have pointed out, the Old Testament does talk about uh, groves. It does talk about the decoration of wooden objects. But what the Old Testament is referring to normally is the carving of wooden idols. Now, this is not the same as a Saturnalia tree, and it should not be equated uh, one with the other. Uh, when the Bible talks about idols, it's talking about uh, things, in this case, that are carved into wood or molten metal objects that are used as items of worship, that you worship that metal or that wooden object. This is not the same concept as a Saturnalia tree, where you cut down an evergreen tree, the types of tree, by the way, that don't exist in Palestine. You cut down the tree, bring it inside your house, you decorate it with silver tinsel, and you use that in, in celebration of Saturnalia or other gods, uh, in celebration of the winter solstice. It, it, it's still a moot point in this argument that it is still not original to Christianity. It should not be called a Christmas tree. What we're talking about is what we in anthropology call a syncretism that is something that is borrowed from one religion that is added to a new religion that is introduced at a later time in this case Christianity it may not be original to Christianity but Christianity borrowed it from the pre-existing pagan traditions in the in the area does that mean that Christians are not allowed to decorate a Christmas tree well of course not it's their right to do so. They consider it a part of their religion. And, like I say, from an anthropological viewpoint, there really isn't anything wrong with that. Where it becomes wrong is when Christians choose to use these syncretisms as a means of discriminating against other people who know it is a syncretism and therefore point out that it's not original to the religion that they are worshipping. This is nothing more than the biggest amount of hypocrisy and discrimination towards the beliefs and worldviews of other people. Decorate a Christmas tree all you want to. I put out a Christmas tree every once in a while. It doesn't mean that I believe it has any religious significance. And if I'm going to say anything about the religious significance, I'm going to talk about the original pagan worship that the tradition comes from. It is not a Christmas tree, and it's not a holiday tree. It's really not something that people ought to be fighting about. But notice that the people doing the most fighting are the Christians. Does that make any sense to you? Because it certainly doesn't to me. Because it might offend somebody. The only people that this is offending are fundamentalist Christians who cannot handle the fact that other people are not also far-right-wing fundy octards. It might offend somebody if you don't like our customs. And that's the key. This is an argument from tradition, not argument from facts. If you don't like our customs, who doesn't like your customs? I don't know anybody that's actually offended by your customs other than you shoving your religion down people's throats and you don't even understand your own religion.
If it offends you so much, then leave! And this is what really gets me. Leave and I will help you pack. There are atheists, agnostics, Christians, Jews, Muslims, Wiccans, all having the courage to serve their country in uniform, overseas, for deployed, and in war zones. You lack the courage to put on a uniform and go overseas and put yourselves in harm's way like these other people have. You tell them to leave because they don't like your customs. Well, you go to where they are and help them pack because they don't like your customs. This is such an unexcusable level of ignorance and bigotry and intolerance that I'm having such a hard time containing my anger towards you for this type of statement. And then, a couple posts later, on your Facebook channel, you then say, hey, yes, support our troops. What do you know about supporting the troops? I was in the military for 13 years. We were friends. Never got a letter from you, phone call, nothing. You don't even support the military service members that you actually know, let alone everybody else. So you disrespect the beliefs of the people that are serving in the military, and then you say, support people in the military, that makes you a hypocrite. And I have no tolerance for hypocrisy. Please post this as your status. Don't care who defends! Merry Christmas! Idiot. Do you have what it takes to repost this? Here's the one thing that I don't truly understand. You are employed with the University of Central Arkansas. You need to make it very clear that you are inextricably tied to UCA. Fair enough, I'm inextricably associated with the University of Arkansas at Fort Smith. The problem is when you make a Facebook post such as this, and directly discriminate against other people's religious beliefs. Not only do you display this extraordinary level of intellectual dishonesty, but you also display a level of bigotry and intolerance that I'm quite certain that the University of Central Arkansas does not want to be associated with. I will give you the opportunity to respond to this video and publicly acknowledge that you were wrong. I'll give you the opportunity to explain how this level of intolerance that you have displayed is not really your opinion and is incongruent with an employee of an institution of higher education. I doubt that you will. You have zero integrity. You cannot handle criticism. You've already proven this. You are a whiny little child. And you have no respect for the beliefs and opinions and worldviews of other people. Now, that's her. And by extension, this is also Rick Perry, Pat Robertson. Fill in the blank, your local neighborhood bigot. I do not hold all religious people to this uh, same level of ignorance and intolerance. I realize that a large number of religious people are in fact very respectful that use their religious beliefs in a positive manner. To, to make a change in society around them. And I don't see why every other religious person has to be denigrated by their association with an individual such as this. Now, 
There are Christians, of course, who believe that Jesus Christ was born on December 25th. Of the people that don't. Now, personally, I see no historical evidence that Jesus Christ ever existed. Some people, of course, hold to a different opinion. But even if Jesus Christ existed, there's no evidence that he was the Messiah. There were several different messianic figures in first century CE. Everything that you read in the Gospels are, in fact, amalgamations of these different messianic stories. And none of it points to any one person that actually existed in society. But let's go for the argument. If you believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, the Messiah, born on December 25th, you have the right to believe that. You have the right to express those beliefs in public. Most of you, you have got to the point that you realize that other people do not believe the same thing that you believe, and most of you are, in fact, respectful of those beliefs. And please uh, continue to do that. The best thing that we could do is use open communication and education to get to the point where we understand and respect and value the differences of opinions of other people. Now, let us then come to some understanding. Either the Christians or atheists or any other religious belief system is exactly what Christmas is supposed to be. A time of gift giving and merriment, peace on earth, goodwill towards men, and time spent with our families. I want us to go a step further in that concept. Let us this year remember the unfortunate, the needy, those who have been hit hard by this economy. I want you to give to Red Cross, the Angel Trees, the Salvation Army, the Marine Corps Toys for Tots, or as a statement I made in one of my earlier videos, the charity of your choice, whatever charity that might happen to be. Let's welcome people who are less fortunate in our homes, volunteer at a soup kitchen, hold a Christmas party or holiday party, whichever you want to call it, and invite your friends. Remember those who are less fortunate that are in the greatest amount of need in our society right now. And while we do that, of course, remember our military members that are overseas. People who are sacrificing the time that they would want to come home and spend time with their families so that you would have the opportunity to spend time with yours. Let us never forget the service and sacrifices that they make in order to protect our freedoms so that we can enjoy this holiday season in peace. That having been said, to everybody else who has watched this video, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Thank you for watching and good night.